Has your progress stalled? Want to break through a plateau? Watch this. Our next caller is Ryan from Maryland. Ryan, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, fellas. Uh, all right, so let me just jump in here. Uh, my question has to do with kind of a, how to prime oneself for your very first bulk. Um, just to give you a quick background, I am 38. Uh, about three years ago, I had this sort of, I guess you can call it like a moment of clarity where I realized uh, I wanted to be a dad at one point. Um, had a couple obstacles in the way. Uh, the first one was I was just super unhealthy. I was about 240 pounds, uh, just not taking care of myself. Um, and I also have a lot of history of heart disease in my family. My dad died when he was in his early 60s. Uh, his dad died when he was 51. So I kind of wanted to try to get that in the, going in the right direction. Um, so for the next like year and a half, I would say, I um, kind of went back and forth between uh, dieting and eating at maintenance, um, got down to about 180 pounds, uh, but truthfully did it in all the wrong ways, right? I dieted too hard. Um, I was only doing cardio. Um, but about a year and a half ago, I decided to, uh, to start lifting weights, actually, when I first started listening to you all. Um, for about nine months of that, I kind of was on the newbie gain train, as it were. Um, gained about 10 pounds over the course of those nine months. Um, and then it plateaued like I thought it would. Um, and then at that point, especially after that, again, listening to you, you all talk about what you do. Um, I realized that at one point I was going to have to start eating more. Right. Um, and it, but as someone who is like an ex, ex obese person, I guess you could say, uh, it scared the shit out of me. I know you guys have talked with other people that have those same issues. Um, so what I decided to do was, um, so when I, when I first started lifting, I was doing the four days a week. Um, and what I thought I would do is kind of like a prep for my first bulk is I, I thought about, okay, let me, let me kind of lock in everything else, right? I'm going to make sure my sleep is good. I'm going to make sure my diet is good. Um, I switched from lifting from three days a week to, or from four days a week to three days a week, kind of on the, um, the advice of you guys kind of, I shifted to just doing compound movements, right? And I tried to lock in everything. I actually backed off of the weight a little bit and just worked on my, um, my, my movements, my mobility, stuff like that. Anyway. So, and then once I, once I did that for a couple of months, then I jumped into a bulk and it was very minimal. It was like maybe 200 calories, 300 calories over what my maintenance was. And I noticed that my body absolutely exploded. I had such, like, I was feeling better. Uh, my lifts went uh, not through the roof, but relatively through the roof from what I was experiencing. And I guess my question really boils down to, do you all, do you, if you, this is something that you've ever kind of like run into. Um, is there any science behind the idea of kind of prepping your body about going into a bulk where you kind of eat at maintenance, but you kind of lock in everything else. And you kind of, honestly, I feel like my body was like so pissed off at me for so long saying like, just give us like a little bit more food, a little bit more energy, and we'll put it to good use because even, and I did this bulk for about 12 weeks and I, my body fat went down a percentage, but my weight increased about seven pounds. Wow. And I thought about you, Adam, when you talked a lot about your body recomp where your, your weight kind of stayed right around the same point, but your body really changed. And although I only did this for 12 weeks, I was just curious, is this something like you've run into with other clients? Um, is this something that maybe I can do more of going forward? Um, so I just was curious with your thoughts on that. Yes and yes. Yep. You, you know what happened to you, Ryan, is you, you started lifting weights. You got to a certain point. Your metabolism got faster. So you needed more calories. This is what we talk about when we talk about strength training being so effective for fat loss. You got a metabolism boost. What happened is your metabolism met your caloric intake. So you can no longer gain any muscle because you were burning what you were eating because you had extra muscle from that nine months of newbie gains. So what you got, what you did is you bumped your calories two to 300. You fueled your, you fed your body the extra that it needed. And it still was a little lower than what you needed because you still went down a percent body fat. So yes, yeah. this is exactly what you can expect. If you do this consistently over time, as you build, you'll get a faster metabolism and you'll require 
more calories to maintain your physique, which is a great place to be, especially if you've dealt with being overweight in the past, because you're going to eat more, but be leaner than you did when you were heavier, when you were 240 pounds. In a, in a perfect world, you continue down this path of kind of doing the same thing as far as adding a couple hundred calories every time you hit these little plateaus and you look back in a year and you're eating a thousand more calories than what you were a year ago, and you're in better shape. You're leaner, stronger, yep. and you're and you're eating a thousand more calories. That's exactly what will happen if right. uh, if you keep going this direction. And it's a it's a good place to be. And and it's actually more common than you would think, especially for somebody who has put on a lot of weight. Uh, this is what they tend to do: is they they are afraid to add too many calories, so they always lean on this the other side, right? It's the opposite of other people, right? It's like you guys know, like, oh God, I, I've been there before. I don't want to go back, and so if I'm going to increase calories, I'm going to do a little bit, and they just want to do a little. They're they're too worried about slapping on four or five hundred calories, but your body's been screaming at you to give it to you, give it to me. I need those calories. I'm trying to build. You're doing all the right things as far as your training, and so. It's actually a really good place, dude. You're you're doing really well right now. Yeah. The only and I guess my go ahead. Oh, one thing. Let me add, Ryan. The only caveat is don't get stuck in the same workout routine because that'll also get you to plateau. So make yeah. sure that you train smart. Don't overtrain. Be very intelligent about it. But phase your workouts, low reps for a few weeks, higher reps for other weeks. Change up some of the other exercises. You know, more volume, less volume. Um, ideally if you want programming, right, you can go from the maps programs, go from one program to another program to another program. And that's kind of how we design them. Are you following a maps program by the way? So I'm not, um, I've definitely been thinking about it. Um, uh, and, and obviously you all would know best, but well, I, I feel like symmetry might be a good call for me, especially mm -hmm. since I moved to doing three days a week and I've been doing just the compounds. Sure. Um, I have been messing around style a little bit with what I've been doing when I first started doing the three days a week, I did a five by five and with one minute um, rest in between just as something to kind of shake it up. Uh, lately I've been doing three sets, but I allow myself three minutes in between sets. But even when I'm doing that, I've noticed a couple of spots where, especially if I'm doing like a dumbbell, like overhead press, I've noticed that like my right tricep is like a little weaker. Um, even back stuff when I do, I've noticed when I just start, I, literally just noticed that I could start doing legit pull-ups lately, which is rad. But I also realized that when I'm lifting myself up, uh, my left side is like a little stronger and I have to kind of like edge it to kind of get them even. So I thought symmetry might be a good call for yeah. me, but I'd be yeah. interested I, to I hear what your call Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're, you're, you're on track. It's perfect. It's a perfect program for you right now. We'll send it over to you and stop thinking about it and just do it. I mean, that's, I think, awesome. uh, it does sound like, though, just so the audience knows, you were doing some good things, though. I mean, as far as the way you were phasing things out, changing up your rest periods, yeah, and like obviously, uh, and th that's it's why you're seeing the results you are. So, but it's nice to have something laid out for you. I think you'll enjoy, uh, hopefully, having a couple of professionals keep that right. stimulus going. Yeah. yeah, and symmetry is a great decision. Yeah. I think it's great symmetry, and then yeah. I love anabolic, and then performance in that direction. That's great. Um, I do have one more uh, quick question for the three of you, if you sure. have a second. Yeah. Um, so again, as being someone who like wants to be a dad and has been kind of got into this later, later in life. Um, I'm curious of how the three of you see your training. Like if you were able to look in the future and say, okay, 10 years from now with my training, what am I, what am I still doing? What are you all still doing? And what do you, what could you see completely changing 10 years from now? Cause I would assume from what I know, you all will be in your fifties at that point. Yeah. So I'm curious of like what you all would change. Cause I know that's something I'll eventually bump into. Yeah. Um, God, I, Sal, mm. Sal's a bad person to answer this. He's still, he's still in the phase of being addicted to training. Justin and I are probably yeah. more appropriate. <laughs> Uh, I would probably look a lot like I am now. Uh, maybe, actually, I hope that my my actually volume increases a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. low volume right now. What's beautiful about where you're at, and if you actually think about fast forwarding 10 years from now, if you do a good job- He's going to do a lot of power walking. Of, there, so. <laughs> stupid. If you do a good job of being really consistent for the next 10 years of lifting and building muscle- you're gonna love the what what you notice. Like it's easy to it, keep. It's it is a lot easier yeah. to keep. I, I I'm getting away with a, a day or two of training. Sometimes those workouts are only 20 minutes long. You can like, almost tell he works out. That was pretty <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So a lot of a lot of my training right now is, uh, you know, I, I prior, prioritize some of the big lifts because I know I'm doing so little right now, to, so I don't lose a lot. Now I I, I recognize that uh, I looked better, you know, four or five years ago, but my volume was incredibly higher. Um, I still do like mobility stuff, um, although I have to, I don't have to do as much of it because I put so much good work in in the last couple of years. So yeah, volume of training just a, a yeah. lot lower. And but, yeah, I think selfishly we created Maps Fifteen uh, based on the fact of yeah. like our yeah. lifestyle and like how that's shifted and how we've um, really been able to um, schedule that around like it conveniently having a home gym too and all that kind of stuff has changed and really kind of like flipped the dynamic for me for you know, how I used to train in commercial gyms, but, uh, I'm always considering those quote unquote functional lifts. And so I will do the, the main compound lifts to just keep that baseline strength there. But, you know, I, I'm trying to address, you know, some of those things just to keep me mentally stimulated when I work out, keep it fun. Uh, but also I didn't really tell them, but like my, my new focus is really to kind of incorporate a little bit more cardio, uh, back in the mix, God forbid. Undercover. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't tell them. Why is it a secret? <laughs> because, dude. Right He's like ashamed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they seriously, I, like hanging out with these guys, like I'm, uh, we I'm found, eating weed We found now. out you were on a treadmill like, last week. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, that's that's my plan. What's that sound uh, outside? Uh, hey, like a- hey Ryan, I'll tell you I'll tell you something that I actually I haven't shared this on show, but it's been in my notes to bring it up to talk about that I think is one of the 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 like biggest epiphanies I've had in my life in the last like five to ten years of lifting. Um I have gotten much better, and hopefully you see this in, in your journey, of having a, a even healthier relationship with my uh nutrition and volume of exercise. Like in the past, even being as a fitness professional, notoriously what I would do is I would be all in and I'd be dieting and training hard and like, like very consistent. And then when I'm off, I'm like, ah, fuck it, whatever. I'm having ice cream. I'm doing whatever that don't worry. I know how to whip it back into shape. And I had this really back and forth relationship with diet and exercise where I have a, 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 a much better and healthier approach, which is I recognize when my, my volume of training is low and I tighten up and I discipline myself with my food choices uh, when those times in my life are, and then when I'm really staying trained and conditioned, uh, I allow those things that I enjoy in my diet more of the, and what I've noticed is it, it, I don't have these dramatic swings and I never really fall way out of shape. And maybe I'm not as shredded as I was when I was competing, but I tend to keep this really healthy kind of body fat percentage, strength ratio, all that, like by just not going extreme. And I think that's, I think a lot of people can relate to that, that they, they're on or they're off. And I've gotten better about never being completely off, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm also not all the way on all the time either. I have a lot better balance. And I think that that has really changed and it's allowed me not to have to go in these, you know, oh, I got to get a hardcore cut now because I let all this body fat come on. It's because I never really get way out of shape anymore. Here, here's the beauty. You're, you're right now you're figuring out or learning the metabolism boosting, uh, incredible ma- metabolism boosting effects of strength training. Here's what you're going to learn 10 years from now is that it's the most, it produces the most permanent results. Now there's no permanent results with exercise, but you know, what Adam's talking about is very true. Like you do this consistently for 10 years. It doesn't take much to keep it. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It's actually pretty awesome. I don't know other form of exercise offers that. So, but I I think you're going to love map symmetry. I think that's a perfect uh, program for you. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear because as someone, I, I will say over the last year and a half, I've been really consistent, which is great, but I know it's not always going to be like that, especially yeah, if yeah. I start a family, like those sorts of things. So the well, idea of being able to find that balance is really, really great. Do, do, you, have a good, just, do you have a good woman or do you have a, are you just, are you single or like you want to be a dad, but do you have the right woman right I, now? Yeah, I, I am single at the moment. I, I thought I landed Step someone one. in the fall. Uh, but it didn't, didn't quite work. I actually had a really funny, you guys always talk about people carrying weight at different point, places on their body. And one time, not to get too personal on you guys, but me and this woman, we were in bed and I, she said, she all of a sudden she was like, God damn. And I said, what? And she was like, your legs, if I, if I didn't know, like, she's like, I don't think you're like super lean or anything. But if I just saw you from the waist down, I would think you were like 6% body fat. And I was like, oh, thank you. But <laughs> unfortunately, I carry it in other places that make it not, not quite as much. So it's another reason why symmetry might be good for me. But, no, uh, Ryan, yeah, you're, just, 
you'll, I'm, you'll, I'm working on I'm working on the dating thing for sure. You'll, you'll enjoy symmetry. And then one to look at too is I, I think that it, for later, I think having, or during those times when you're not asking, I think MAPS 15 would be a valuable yeah. program to have in your that's life. A, that's, too, the, so. that's the program for parents, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I had a so. PR doing that program, by the way, so it works. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys. And I just wanted to say one last thing is just that as an aspiring dad, some of the, the conversations you guys have about being parents and, and constantly learning. I feel like that's such a huge thing when it comes to being a parent. Not a lot of people think about that sort of thing, how you can learn, how you can evolve as a parent and as a partner. It's just pretty amazing. So I really appreciate you guys. Ryan, do you have a social media handle you want to plug Thanks, real brother. quick? Since girls will be watching this, maybe we'll get you some dates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, yeah, I, I mean, I could throw it out there. It's pretty pretty simple. What's your, yeah, what, what is what's it? Your, what's your Instagram? Let's get you some DMs. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe I'm doing it. Uh, so on Instagram, it's Ryan, R-Y-A-N, M as in Michael, and then my last name Pringer, P R E N G E R. So, All right. if you're out there, hit me up. I'm I'm in Maryland, but I I work from home, so I'm uh, I'm flexible on uh, no, long distance things. All All right. Awesome. Good you deal, hear man. that, ladies? He's flexible. <laughs> <I hope you're laughs> right. He's got uh, lean got legs, you, buddy. Yeah. Lean legs and flexible. I appreciate right. you guys. All Thanks, right. All right, man. Take it easy, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, uh, what you said is so true. I, I mean, all joking aside, you look like somebody who works out, you know, four days a week, five days a week. <laughs> but that's because of the, the the foundation you built, and it's so true, you know. And people are looking for that, right? They're looking for exercise that sticks around, the results that stick yeah. around. Strength training does that. And when you do it for a long period of time, you get this, like, kind of permanent muscle almost. It's not permanent, but – pretty amazing i i'll never stop i'll never stop doing it for sure but it'll it'll be modified based on what my body says so yeah i'm sure at some point i'll probably have to use a sled primarily yeah. for everything Just lower keep body. finding a new angle that keeps it interesting that's, that's it. my that, whole thing that's my favorite part about getting older that i feel like nobody really communicated to me when i was younger and i, I get you know what if you would have told me that that would have been motivating for totally. me in my 20s and 30s totally. to know like hey bro you're going to put a lot of hard work in right now, but it's going to be easy as you get older and you're going to look better you, than most of your peers. Do you remember how hard it was to be over 200 pounds? Yeah. Oh, dude, just pressing there was everything. Yeah, now it's like I could be 200 pounds, work out once a week and have 200 pounds of muscle. You know? Yeah.